let's take a look at the WAC equation. If you remember, that's the weighted average cost of capital. And just to remind ourselves, what is the equation? It's the debt ratio times one minus the tax rate times the return on debt, plus the equity proportion times the return on equity. And for the most part, people just memorize this equation and they go and then apply it. But let's go ahead and try to derive it and see where it comes from. And you'll see that once you derive it, it makes it a lot easier to remember it. Remember the equation for levering betas, unlevering betas. Um, it helps you understand the implications for tax and when WAC equals return on assets and equals return on equity. And it just brings a lot more um, understanding into it rather than a pure memorization of an equation. So remember that's the equation. Um, let's now see what we need to do to get there. Um, so we're going to start with the assets equals debt plus equity, right? The take on our old equation from accounting assets equals liabilities plus equity. In this case, liabilities is debt, but it's the same exact equation. Now, what I'm going to position though, is that this equation is more of a book value equation. And once you start looking at market values and you start looking at taxes and these imperfections, um, this equation changes a little bit. And in order to understand that, let's look at a world of um, when you have interest versus when you don't have interest, and let's see what it does to the value of your company. So again, we'll, let's put this equation to the side, and let's look at um, two worlds. First world, revenue of, let's say, $1,000. Let's say we have expenses of $500. And let's imagine that in this world, we've taken on some debt. We've taken on, let's say, you know, $1,000 of debt. And let's say that the interest rate, the RD, return on that debt is 10%. So then we're gonna have to pay an interest as well, right? You have debt, so one of our other expenses is interest, which is your debt times RD which is 100, right? 1,000 times 10%. So therefore, your profits before taxes, right? So I'm just going to call it earnings before taxes is 1,000 minus 500 minus 100. That's 400. Now, let's say in a world that you didn't have that interest, right? You didn't, let's look at a world that debt equals zero. Same $1,000, expenses of 500, um, interest is zero, right? There's no debt. And now your earnings before taxes is 500. Now let's assume that we have tax uh, 40%. 40% uh, times 400, that's 160. And then 40% times 500 is 200. Therefore, your earnings after tax is 240. Here, your earnings after tax is 300. So you might say to yourself, okay, the interest was actually a cost, right? And I'm actually better off without that interest. And that's kind of true, except you remember over here, right? Debt holders are also owners of the company. So any interest that's going to debt holders is also value for the company. Debt plus equity is the value of the company. So if you actually look at what do our equity holders plus debt holders get, right? Because both of those, as you can see here, are owners of the company. So this 240, right? This is after interest, after tax. This is for equity, right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna position that equity gets this amount. Debt got a hundred, right? And so maybe I should put that over here. That means we had a total of 340. Now in this case, debt got zero because there was no interest. And so you can see that the amount that your debt plus equity got is actually higher in the world that you had debt. It's higher by 40. And that's what we're gonna call the interest tax shield. Um, because you have interest, you're able to pay the, the government, Uncle Sam, less money. And that's the value that doesn't go to your debt holders, doesn't go to your equity holders. That's kind of the pure tax, the pure cost. So if the goal is to minimize tax, you can see that taking debt actually increases the value of, of the company. So if you see that every every year, you're going to pay RD times D in interest. 
if you remember from before, the tax yield that you're getting, right? Let's scroll back over is um, you went from 340 to 40, it's 40. That amount is actually just equal to the interest payment 100 times the tax rate, right? So that is a difference of 40, which equals 100 times 0.4, which was RDD times TC, right? So every year this company is gonna benefit by this amount in value because they took on that debt payment. So coming back over here to the other side, we see that um, every year that company gets RDD TC. So the first year, first year we'll discount by RD. The next year, same thing. Discount by one plus RD squared. That's an RD, sorry, it's confusing. Uh, and then plus RD D T C divided by one plus R D to the end. Now there's actually a, a handy map shortcut that helps us simplify this. And when you see something in this pattern, which is the same term on top, um, divided by one plus something to the first, one plus something to the second, one plus something to the third, on and on and on, that actually simplifies down into that term on top. So RDD times the tax rate divided by that RD on the bottom. Now, if you look, you'll see that that even simplifies a little bit more into TC times debt. And this is the present value of a tax shield that you get that increases the value of your company um, if you get that amount every year. Now, with that behind us, we can start to return to this equation we had before, A equals D plus E. Now, what I will position is that because you can take on debt, this value actually changes. And so your value of your firm is actually your assets plus the tax shields that are generated from debt, which equals debt plus equity. So this is a brand new term that's created by market imperfections, um, such as taxes. And the incentives uh, for taking tax are these tax shields that you pay, that you get to deduct interest and pay those out to your debt holders first, then pay taxes, which is actually going to lower the amount of taxes that you end up paying. So with this, let's now look at um, a return, right? Every one of these is going to have an associated return. So if we're looking to calculate what the, what the return on this overall company is, we can just simply say, well, let's look at the proportion that's of assets is coming, you know, proportion of the value of the company is coming from assets times the return on assets plus the proportion of the value of the company is coming from tax shields times the return on tax shields. Um, and on, right? And you can see, just by doing this, we're starting to get to something that's starting to look like the weighted average cost of capital formula. Now, let's simplify this a little bit more, right? Earlier we talked that tax yields is actually that, right? If you remember coming back here, TC times debt is a tax shield. So the tax shield is TC times debt. So let's keep going. A over B, R A plus T, C, D, B, or T, S, D over B, R, D, plus E over V, R, E. Okay, so you remember this was because we said that tax shields is T, C times debt, and that's what we solved for in the, in the previous page. Now I'm going to make another claim, and I'm going to say that a return on tax shields is actually a return on debt, right? Because if you look at tax shield, it's the tax, which is a static number, times debt. So therefore, we can plug in, say, A over V R A plus T C D V R D equals D over V R D plus E over V R E. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this term, do some standard algebra, bring it over to the other side, a over V R A equals D over V R D minus T C D over V R D plus E over V R E. Simple algebra. Now I'm going to continue simplifying the right side. 
I'm going to pull out the D over V R D. You can see that's shared on both sides. So D over V 1 minus T C R D plus E over V R E. So if you look and see, if you remember from before, this is the weighted average cost of capital. This is readjusting our debt and equity amounts and averaging to see how much they contribute to our overall return on the company. So that's one way to do it. But the other way to do it, if you have RA, you know what the value of the company is and you know how much of it is from assets, probably less likely, but maybe. That is another way to calculate WAC. So WAC is just taking your return on assets and taking the proportion of it that's coming from assets, in another word, because a portion of it is coming from your assets and a portion of it is coming from your tax shields. So this is how you get WAC, and that's how it's coming from this basic equation, V equals A plus TS equals D plus E. Now, something else you can do, right, when you're looking at betas, you can do the same thing. Okay, and we can use the same exact shortcuts that we did before. A over V, B, B A, plus T, C, D over V, B, D, equals D over V, B, D, plus E over V, uh, B, E. And you can manipulate this however you want to get whichever one of these values you want. You don't have to worry about the unlevering formula, the levering formula. It's all coming from this. So for example, one of the assumptions a lot of times people make is that the debt beta is zero, right? It's not risky. It's not a, you know, it's not a 100% right assumption, but it works to help us teach us the concepts. That means this term goes, this term goes, and you have A over V, B A equals D, sorry, E over V, B E, you can even simplify this a little bit more because you know that asset equals D plus E minus TCD, right? This is tax shield. This is just coming from this formula up here, right? If I wanted to solve for A, it's D over D plus E minus TS. Come back here and we can see that you have A equals D times 1 minus T C plus E. Now you can take this, plug it back up here, and so you have an equation D over 1 minus T C plus E divided by V B A equals E over V B E. Right, you can multiply both sides by B, get rid of this, and so you start to see that all these equations that you're memorizing and putting in your cheat sheets, they're all coming from this with two main assumptions. Assumption one, assumption two. So weighted average cost of capital, it's not rocket science, it's not coming from anything magic, it's coming from this and averaging returns, averaging betas, and making some simple assumptions. So that's whack which is really whack. <laughs> Had to make the lame joke, sorry. But I plan on making videos like this, uh, pretty much me writing on a whiteboard or my tablet doing problems, and hopefully that helps. And if it does, I'll keep making them. And if not, I'll move on to my next hobby. So thanks for tuning in and let's talk soon. Take care.